Well, all right, everybody, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna just gonna go through some Google Classroom things, and then we'll also um, talk more about kind of the routines I have set up for this class. Um, so, what I want us to do with the Google Classroom is just kind of explore stuff that's in there, so you guys don't have to fall down there. Let me just erase this real quick. I'm gonna play what we're doing. Unfreeze the screen. Okay. Google Classroom. I'm going to show you guys some things on Google Classroom so you know where to kind of find things. You guys should have hopefully already joined it. And hopefully you guys have also already sent me a... Um, an email and a Google Hangout message. Those are the best ways to get in contact with me. I want you to feel comfortable messaging me outside of class time. Um, I am always happy to answer the emails and the at learn uh, Edgewater one is a better one to send it to me because it separates you guys from the rest of my voice. So here's where you guys are gonna get your posts for just uh, as a thread. But if we're looking for something specific, I suggest you look under classwork. Uh, and I will divide this up into topics once we start our various topics. So everything that we need from last lesson and this lesson will be in this welcome uh, announcement here. And usually whenever I make announcements, I just link them to my Google site. So that way it kind of lasts forever. Um, so that's the first thing I want us to kind of look at. The other thing I want us to look at was Google Calendar. I don't know if we're going to need to use this, but in case we do, uh, I just wanted to show you guys that. I want to go to display. Uh, I just want to show you guys that I do have your lessons put into this Google Calendar, so it's a nice little reminder uh, for you when you have science. Uh, but the other thing that I've done is I've generated a Google Meet port, uh, just in case we need to do any sort of remote learning, and that's where we can access it. But don't worry, I will post it onto Google Classroom if we do need to use it. Any questions so far? All right, let's go back to the lesson and talk about what we're doing for today. Yay! All right. All right, so we're working on still going in to our new school year for 2022, in particular for year 10 class. I haven't really had a chance to meet with you guys because we've had a lot of interruptions. We missed a lot of Mondays uh, and things like that. So that's why, even though we're in week three, we are still just settling in. I will always write things on the side whiteboard here in case you come in late so that we still know what our learning intention is. Are we good so far with that? All right. My idea today is something I want us to kind of get used to as part of our routine, and that is a weekly check in. So, the first time I see you guys during the week, I like to ask you some questions just to help us kind of uh, tie bits of information together, but also set a tone for the week, thinking about you know, your microphone and just kind of a random question. Okay. So, let me show you where I want you to answer those questions. Google Classroom, and it's under that term one weekly check in. Each student should have one. If you currently don't have one right now, it's because you need to get onto my Google site. I counted four, it's not Google site, Google Classroom. I counted 14 in the class, so I need two more people who haven't logged on to our Google Classroom page yet. With the weekly check-in, this is the document that you can write in, or not write in, that I want you to write in. The first thing I want you to do is to write in what you learned last week. That is really important because it helps us tie various weeks of information together. So I want you to have a think. Now, there's not really much that we learned, but we could talk about that first lesson and what we talk about as kind of um, some of the routines or something you learned about me, that sort of thing. The second thing here is a micro goal. So on this column for week number three, I want you guys to set a goal for the week. It doesn't have to be an academic goal. It doesn't have to be a science goal. It can be something as simple as 
I want to run five kilometers. This is pretty useful to think about because then I know what else is on your plate. So maybe you have a second of that. If I know that, then that helps me plan. I say four columns for each of the columns. In this order in column, it's where you answer the random question. So the random question for this would be, what, what was your favorite childhood toy? So you got three columns filled in, or three boxes filled in. And then the last page here is just anything you'd like to let me know. So um, if this is a place you communicate with me and you don't want to uh, stop and chat with me after class, but you have some important information, you could be like, Miss, I'm going to be sad today, my mom. Something like that. Or if you can just talk to me and um, get in contact with me in another way. So, for the I want you guys to do that and then we'll get started. And I'll put that PowerPoint back on the board. Cool. Okay, so. Things you can learn about my routines and what I like to kind of do. All right, one of the things that I think is really important that we do, and we take this time, and that's why I like to do this at the start of every week, is just to do a little quote at all. Uh, and it's really important for us just to kind of build those relationships in the class. Uh, I think a lot about Manakutana um, and how that's building that respect, that generosity, and that care for each other. Um, it's just to build that sense of community. So I like to take that moment at the start of our week uh, to do that. So I'm just going to keep people out of my jar, which should help uh, create some class discussion. It's also to make it fair so that way. Everybody gets to talk at some point. Uh, I usually do it a lot with the mafia. I also tend to do it a lot whenever we have questions in the class. Uh, I pick someone out randomly. It's perfectly fine to say, I don't know, or I don't have a goal, or I don't have a favorite toy. That's just a nice way to have discussion. Once you've been picked, I put you into the have been picked job, and you don't get picked again until we cycle through the whole class. All right? So just a one-off, you get picked, get moved out. Some people like to be picked just for some questions because they're easier, and this is one of the examples of a nice, easy question. So, this thing is favorite toy. So the person that's going to be sharing their favorite toy today is going to be Avisha. What was your favorite toy growing up? Toy <laughs> car? All right, so we need to be respectful, remember? So toy car was my favorite car. Yeah. Like to play with Yeah. Um, second question. We'll do that same question. Favorite toy, and that's going to be Nevea. 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 Do you have a favorite toy? No. All right. That's okay. All right, next one is going to be my goal for the week. So what are you trying to accomplish this week? Uh, Kaylee? Mm -hmm. she said I huh? You don't have one? That's okay. But it's a point. Have a little think about what you can have as your goal this week. I know for me, my little micro goal is... I am trying. Oh, wait till you guys are a bit more quiet and respectful. Like I said, the quote at all time is for us to kind of build that sense of connections. My micro goal is to make a cake. Uh, I have a wedding on the weekend and I'm supposed to be bringing a cake. It's not the wedding cake, but it's something that I have to plan into my schedule. All right, we'll pull up one more person. Uh, Hassan, what's your micro goal for this week? Uh, do you have a goal? Do you have a 
No go? No? All right, you can tell yourself about those sort of things. All right, let's then move on. All right, does anybody have anything they want to share before we move on? Because now we're going to move on to work mode. To work mode. No? Work mode. So we now need to start thinking about our learning journey that we are going on. So we are switching gears. What is important to think about when we are thinking about our learning journey is that we are doing this journey together. I really like the analogy of the walker and how we're all on this walker together. Um, so it's a learning journey that we need to do as a class. Um, the other thing I'm going to think about is that we want to be protected as a class. If you want to go fast, you can go alone. So you get very fast to your destination. But if you want to go far, you need to work together. And that's something I need us to think about. And I will remind you guys of this yeah. each week. Um, and that's why it's important, like I said, in our class to be respectful, things like that. Because every time we stop, we slow down the walk up and we slow how much we're going to learn for this year or for that lesson. All right? Last week, last week we started talking about my routines, my expectations, and procedures. We also started to build some relationships. What I want to do for this year is selling and for the school year. And again, this is like I said, uh, building those relationships and things like that. The other thing we need to do on the first lesson of the week is um, share a weekly uh, toy. I have it from this book here, which I thought was right, uh, quite nice. Um, and it's a nice one just to kind of think about each week a kind of word of wisdom. Uh, so we're thinking about basically banishing your fears this week. Um, feel the fear and do away with it. All right, moving on. All right, so let's kind of keep working on our lesson plan. So if you guys remember last week, we did quite a few things that we uh, chopped off. And so we're basically going to finish the second half today. On our success criteria, we were thinking about today. Um, or reflect on what drives us. Um, we'll build some more relationships, and then also we already have done number five, how to access everything we need for remote learning. Everything's going to be as little faster. So let's finish the class expectations that we talked about. I took a nice little screenshot of it. We can think about some things that we want as our kind of classroom expectations. And I'll zoom in a little bit more so we can see it. So, looking at the classroom expectation, this year, a lot of people talked about uh, trying to do their best in classes. They gave some specifics to it, and they said, oh, I want to try to get excellence. Um, and there's also a lot of people that are saying good grades. All right? This year, if you want to get a toilet pass, really easy. I gave it to you guys at the start of the term. If you use them, then or you lost them, well, then you have to wait till next term. Yeah. And you have to ask your friend for a while. Oh, yeah. You know what? That would be very important. I tell them so. Because some people ask them a lot. All right. So, what goals are you thinking big picture? And again, a lot of you guys tie to the same thing. A lot of them have to tie with career. Uh, such as getting a job, um, being successful, and also being rich. So all those things kind of tie together with the big picture. And how you guys are thinking about what can I do in life to um, basically stop surviving the bug to the crack up. On the end bit, it's more so for the characteristics that we were looking at and how we wanted to develop as a person. So we're thinking about being supportive, education being a really important part uh, to both this year and life, which should always be learning. Uh, and living life to the fullest. So that's kind of what we discussed. And if you guys remember, when we were thinking about these classroom, ex um, or sorry, when we were thinking about these goals, um, these goals just had those two categories. 
What do you want to do with life? What do you want to do this year? But in reality, a lot of life goals and this year's goals overlap, and these goals will help each other out. So for example, doing well academically ties into how life is going to play out. And if you have you know, success in life, you're probably going to be living your life to the fullest and be happier. Um, being rich will also mean that you can do lots of different activities. You have the money to do it. So does that make sense so far? All right, so the reason why I wanted to show you guys this and why we did this activity was because I want you to think about um, what do we need to do to be successful? So I'm going to write class goals and expectations. So when we're thinking about this, we are thinking about things um, that we need to do in order to succeed. So what sort of expectations do we need to have as a class to meet our goals? Any ideas? Your tens. What do we need to do in order to succeed as a class? And meet our goals. Try our best. Communicate. What sort of way should we be communicating? Talking to each other, raising our hands so that way we can hear each other, sending me a message if you need anything to help with. Huh? What time did this class start? Do you want to use a toilet pass? Anything else? What are classroom expectations that we need? Make sure you write your name on it. What else do we need to do as a class in order to succeed? A lot of you guys want to get good grades, but what do we need to do to get good grades? Work hard. Work hard. So work hard, try our best. What is that going to look like? <laughs> what does focus look like? Writing notes, doing the tasks that you have. Yeah, doing the focus, writing notes, doing tasks that are assigned. What else? What else would we need to have success? All right, can we close the devices? There's no need for them to be open right now. Close them, close them. They don't need to be at 45. Shut. Shut. I'm waiting for all the device lids to be shut. Thank you. All right. So what do we need as classroom expectations in order for us to meet our goals? If no one wants to share, I'm going to start picking out of the drawer. What classroom expectations do we need in order to meet our goals? Respect. Yeah. Respect not only for me, but also for each other. So that means listening when other people are talking. The other thing about being respectful would be things like not distracting your classmates. Yeah. What else? Um, Hearing? So what do you mean by hearing? Or maybe listening? 
Caring, thank you. The masks are making it hard to hear. Caring, yeah? So we should be caring, we should be kind. We want this to be a positive, safe learning environment, right? We want to be supportive of each other. And listen to each other, good. Anything else you guys can think of that we think we need to have as our expectations of ourselves and what expectations you have of me? Huh? No putting your classmates down? I think that's great. Now, do you guys think... Do you guys think that you... Or sorry, I should say, are you guys okay with these expectations? Do you think these are reasonable? Yes. Yes, so this is expectations we can live by to succeed. Okay. Cool. Anything else? Are we good? Are we good with that? All right. Let's move on to the next activity. All right. So, you guys won't do right away. Um, let me grab my little push pens. One of the things that I think is really important to think about at the start of the year, or just in general, is where do we come from? Thinking about our ancestors and things like that, thinking about our journey. So, I think it's about three four kids. Now, I wish we could take a five kids. One back. Oh, man. Oh, man. And our journey to getting here. So, the first thing I do is a red pin, and that's the state where I was born. So, for me, I put my red pin in Chicago. I was born in and in New York. The things that I want to put in in a moment are these yellow ones, and this is represents like the grown up. So, for me, that would be my parents. But it might be a grandparent, it might be his aunt and uncle. Uh, basically, we can look up to that as an adult. So I'll be able to yell I put one yellow pin in this building, that's my best friend. And I put the other yellow pin in uh, Malaysia, that's in the mountain. The last pin that we have are white pins, and that can be about where my ancestors are from. So for me, I put my white pin in the UK, so for my dad's side of the family is from. And for, for my mom's side of the family, I put it in Hainan, China, because that's where our ancestors are from. Now, you can see there's already a lot of pins that I've been putting in the back for my other classes as well. And I think it's really important in our pin the first thing is that we have a lot of diversity in our classroom. We're going to see things that are all around the world. And the other thing that I think is quite magical is that for this moment, we have all been tied together. So right now, for this year, we happen to cross paths, and we should celebrate that. So, in a moment, you guys will be doing a motivation letter activity, and while you're doing that, I'll call you guys up if you want to put in your own pins to share where you're from. Not right now. I'll let you know when you can. So, we're going to talk about what motivates. Alright? So, one of the things that we're going to do is the goal for the week, and that's okay. So, one of the things that we're going to think about how do I get myself motivated to do things. So for me, when I think about motivation, what drives me to be a good teacher and a good person has to do with my, my mom and my uncle. Two very important ladies in my life. My uncle, like I said, is my grandmother. Yeah? So the first thing that I think about is the fact that I am a first generation American. I think about the fact that my family are all immigrants. Immigrants of multiple uh, generations as well. So you guys might be immigrants themselves, or you guys might also be a first-generation thief. 
And with that, I think comes with like extra responsibility. Because you think about how your parents or your grandparents have worked really hard to make your life a little bit better than theirs. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot about that when I think about my parents and how hard they work to get to the United States. Mm -hmm. I also think a lot about my grandparents on my mom's side because they are immigrants as well. They immigrated from China to Malaysia. Right? The devices need to be closed. Thank you. So they worked really hard to immigrate to countries that they thought would give them a better life and a better opportunity. And it worked out really, really well. So, some background. My grandparents, my Po Ma Fong, came from a village in China. And it was a very poor village. For example, my Apo, very important lady in my life, she could not read or write in any language, completely illiterate, could not do basic math, could not add or subtract. She was completely dependent on other people to help her survive day to day life. Because you think about how much you need to read and just do some math. She had diabetes and high blood pressure. So she needed to find things low sodium or low salt. And she also needed to find things that were sugar-free. But she couldn't do that. So even going to the supermarket, she needed someone to go with her to then help her buy things. She also couldn't figure out how much she was about to spend. And so she was so embarrassed going to the till, and she didn't want to hand uh, too little money. So she always hand over large notes and hope it was enough money. So she didn't want to be embarrassed. And that, to me, was really, really helpful. Or here, too. And then he left. He loved to seek his fortune. He was lucky because he was a very smart man and he was able to uh, become a mechanic himself. My uncle, on the other hand, was not allowed to go to school because she was a girl. The village was too poor and they said it's not worth uh, educating the girls. They are meant to get married, have babies, take care of the house, farm, which is crazy and very, very sad. So it greatly impacted her life, and that taught me a lot of important lessons of how much I value my education. My mom, on the other hand, um, she was educated, and my uncle was very, very clever. When she sent her children to school, she sent them to English-speaking schools. So she thought, if my children can speak English, they can get more jobs, and they can get out of Malaysia. And that's what they did. And in fact, a lot of our siblings and her siblings have been able to leave Malaysia because of that English. My mom saw how lucky she was. She knew for her that her education opened the doors to the world for her. And she thought it's very important for me to give back. So my mom, she ended up working for the YMCA. And at the YMCA, she became uh, eventually the, the director of the Asian department. So she got to decide how much of funding and the donations was going to be spent in Asia. And that to her was very important because she wanted to give back to the community she came from. She grew up poor and she got out of that poverty and so she wanted to help others get out of that poverty as well. So, this is a, so I was fortunate enough that I got to do two trips. Like I go a trip to see my aunt or to see my village, and I also got a trip with my mom to uh, India. And both of those trips taught me a lot about myself and a lot about the privileges and gifts that I had in life. So while we were in India, I saw a lot of poverty, um, but I saw people trying to help and trying to move forward. And so that really humbled me as a teenager, and it made me think I also need to give back. I got really lucky. I want to make the world a better place, too. So um, I studied science for that reason. I was really interested in science-y stuff because I thought science was a good way to help cure diseases and things like that. Um, I realized I didn't like research, so I ended up uh, becoming a teacher because I thought, you know, it's really important to share that power of education. Mm -hmm. And it's quite beautiful to think that an uneducated woman has a teacher as a granddaughter. And it shows how far you can probably get that education. Mm -hmm. All right. I've been there so far. I'm going to keep going to the start of each lesson. Uh, just to ask yourself, okay, what do I need for this lesson to be successful? What can I request and check off? I have 
ask myself the same thing as a teacher. And what do I want out of my students? I want my students that are At the end of the day, as much as I would love you guys to know a lot of science, there are bigger things that are more important than that in my mind. The first thing is that you guys are respectful. I want you to be respectful to each other, respectful about feelings and boundaries, and I just want you to be kind people. I want you to add goodness to the world. I also want you guys to understand other people's perspectives and ideas, because it's something bigger than yourself. I want you to be aware and appreciate the things that people do for you, and be aware and appreciate the things you have. Um, I want you guys to be reflective. I want you to think about how your actions affect others, how it affects the world, how it affects the environment. I want my students to be critical thinkers. I want you to challenge the information. Um, I want you guys to work to the best of your ability. And not laugh at others. Yeah. All right. I want you guys to feel like you can ask for help. In fact, that's a really normal thing in science because it's so common in science to say, I don't know. That's why we keep doing experiments. Um, and the last thing, the most important thing I want my class and my students to develop is what I like to refer to as a servant's heart. I heard this term uh, a couple years ago and I really love it. A servant's heart. A servant's heart is to think of and to do something bigger than yourself. And beyond you. So, I want you guys to ask that same question. What is it that motivates you? Why do you want to be rich? Why do you want to be successful? Why do you want to become a doctor? With that, I want you to think about, you know, what do you want to do in life? What type of life do you want to have? Why do you want to do it? For me, a lot of my own internal motivations are my family. If you are stuck and you don't know what to write in your letter, I have some supporting questions to help you out. Think about your purpose. Think about what you're doing. What are you accomplishing? What sort of life do you want to have? What do you want the world that you live in to look like? What do you want your contributions to be? What do you want to be remembered for? So in a moment, I'm going to give you guys out a piece of paper. And you're going to have a chance to write this letter to yourself. This letter is only for you. It is not for me to read. I will not read it. So what's going to happen is I'll give you a piece of paper. I'll give you an envelope to seal it in. I will hold on to them so you don't lose them. I might have them back to you if I feel like, hey. No, I don't. I'm here myself. What I might do is I might give it to you in a moment, like in a moment of weakness. So let's say you're being really distracted, you're sitting at the table chair, and I give it to you, and I go, I think you need to read this. So what does it mean? I will also give it back to you at the end of the year to take home. It's a nice Or you can ask me, Miss, can I reread my motivation letter because I think I need that whole reality check? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, what else did I want to say about it? This is, like I said, for you. I would recommend the, the date on it. I think it's cool to see when you wrote it. And I'm happy if you want to write it in any language. So I communicate best in English. Uh, but if you communicate in a different language better, because it's supposed to be what is your motivation, you can write it in whatever language is easiest for you. Oh, I, I had students write this in Korean before. All right? While well, you're working on that, I'll let you guys... Uh, and small groups come over and put in the pins to our map. If you finish early, I uh, have a worksheet that you can do. Let me first talk about that. And then you can get the Okay? All right, everyone. So, I'm uh, um, if you're still working on the last page, don't worry. If it's not completed, it's just to help you guys to think about some of those uh, protocols you keep in mind for safety. Um, so, Kapara, really good work today. I'll give you guys three. What? 
I'll give you some coffee beans to put in our little jar. Yeah. 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 I would like to give you more. It's still a little bit too much to check. But you still have to eat. Thank you. 